Uh, next, we're going to see our fuel compensation, and this is going to be based on a closed loop and an open loop. And we can see here that we have our percentage ethanol on top, so this is going to be our blend or content level. And then on the bottom part, it's going to be the multi multiplying factor. It's going to actually go ahead and multiply against our main fuel table value here. So whatever we're uh, calculating and getting uh, produced for our injector pulse width, this percentage then will be a percentage multiplier to that injector pulse width. So um, we can see here that 85% ethanol is, has about a 42% multiplying factor. That's probably going to be sufficient to start with. Um, typically, going from pure uh, 93 octane to uh, ethanol blended fuel, we're going to see about a 35% difference in uh, uh, needing to add for fuel uh, just to get back in line to maintain the same stoichiometric ratio. Um, so 42% is a little bit more than we might need, but it's a good starting point because it'll be safe. And we can see that as we go above 85% here, it hasn't been populated up to this 100% level. So if we're going to be running pure E98 in our fuel system, we might have to go ahead and add some values here. We might have to increase this to something like uh, 60 um, to start getting our fuel back in line. So typically speaking, we're not going to have to change these values um, if we're just sticking with the 85%. They'll be sufficient, um, but again, they're a multiplying effect. So they're going to multiply whatever we figure out for our injector pulse width. Um, when we can look here, if we start using these tables, it's going to start multiplying the injector pulse width to increase the fuel flow um, to make sure that we can get our desired achieved our, uh, air fuel, desired air fuel.